While it remains true that the two certainties of this life are death and taxes, it looks like for many of us death is going to be delayed somewhat, as more Australians live into their 80s, 90s and beyond. And developing expertise into looking after our older people is an ongoing challenge. Not long ago, if you were in your 80s, you usually had false teeth. But today, people in the later stages of life often have lots of their own natural teeth, as well as crowns, bridges and even implants. Better Oral Health in Residential Care is a nationally recognised model of care and won the South Australian Premier's Award in 2009. A suite of educational resources and a training program was developed to support aged care staff to implement this model. But did this model lead to ongoing changes to the everyday practices of care workers? What were the obstacles? Who were the people needed to make the change? And was the cost worth it? I'm off to the South Australian Dental Service to meet Adrian Lewis, the manager of the Better Oral Health in Residential Care project team. A national rollout of the project's training package took place in 2010 as part of Australia's first nursing home oral and dental health plan. Why did you take on this challenge? I took on this challenge because when you understand the impact of poor oral health on older people's quality of life and well-being and the pain and misery that it causes, you realise that oral health care is not an optional extra. Oral care is often missed and seen as a low priority and I wanted to develop a model to help aged care staff to change this situation and to see oral health as a fundamental aspect of everyday care. Adrian, what's your vision for the program from here? I see oral health as a wicked problem. And it's a problem that can't be achieved by one person or one entity acting alone. It's not an aged care problem, nor is it a dental problem. It's a shared problem that calls for collaboration. But collaboration won't happen by itself. It needs leadership and commitment. It also needs the input of some special people that can shape positive outcomes. I call these people boundary spanners because they can work between the dental sector and the aged care sector and they bring people together. But the good news is I know there are people like that out there and they are using the resources and adapting them and they are making a difference. I'm in Newcastle to meet Karen Sleeshman and Janet Wallace, two of the boundary spanners Adrian Lewis was referring to. Karen developed a program named Residential in The Hunter and Janet developed Senior Smiles on the Central Coast. Karen and Janet used and adapted the Better Oral Health in Residential Care model to improve oral health services in over 50 facilities. Karen, tell me your story on how you've used the model. One of the four key processes is actually access to dental treatment. So we came up with an approach that made this easier and more accessible. We put together seven kits of portable dental equipment that's, that's available for the residential aged care facilities to use. And we identified local private dental practitioners that want to provide this service. We identify the payment pathways of the residents, organise consents and medical history, so that's ready prior to the dentist visit. And this approach really is a collaboration between public and, and private dental sectors, and it's had a fantastic outcome that it's actually increased dental treatment on site to residents of the facilities. Um, and I know for a fact that this type of approach actually occurs in other states as well. And Janet, what's your approach been with this model? We're encouraging residential aged care facilities to include dental hygienists and oral health therapists on their team. Uh, Senior Smiles used the four key processes from the model to introduce uh, education for staff and residents, to develop oral health risk assessments, oral health care plans, and also to implement some referral pathways to dentists for more complex care. Uh, dental hygienists and oral health therapists have got a lot to offer uh, in oral health in the aged care uh, facilities and at the University of Newcastle we're committed to providing our students with uh, the opportunity to develop those skills during their undergraduate degree. And Karen, tell me what sort of reaction have you had? 
probably one of the most remarkable reactions we had was actually from a pharmacist and he noted that there was quite a significant reduction in the number of antibiotics that he had prescribed following the implementation of the model. Dr Lucas Sakalos is an Adelaide dentist who's worked in aged care for over 10 years and provides services at four facilities. Lucas, what do you need from an aged care facility to make things work for you? Yeah, we need a really enthusiastic and motivated director of care. We need an oral health champion provided by the facility and we need a dedicated room. How important is daily oral care? It, it's the linchpin. Without that, anything I do is just not going to work. Are there any major obstacles getting in the way of people accessing your service? Funding. The director of care needs to be aware of resources that are available through private health insurance, through Department of Veteran Affairs and any government schemes. Why is it so important to have a dentist like you go into an aged care facility? Let me give you an example. The oral health champion brought to me a resident who had facial swelling, had an abscessed tooth, was in pain. I was able to assess the situation, take the tooth out then and there and avoid her having to get into an emergency situation where she'd have to go into hospital. Aged care workers are the ones who really get down to the nitty gritty of how this model is really working. Bill Manny is a registered nurse who's worked in the aged care sector for more than 12 years. Recently I've been working as a registered nurse for an agency, working in a lot of different aged care facilities in the Hunter. And what I find when I go into these facilities uh, that I, I see products that were recommended by the model actually being used by the residents and the staff and the aged care facilities usually allocate a registered nurse to coordinate the oral cares. Uh, my daughter Ashley um, is an undergraduate registered nurse in the second year of nursing. She uh, came home the other day and said that um, they were teaching uh, oral health to the student nurses and a lot of the information that was being given was being drawn from the Better Oral Health Program. Bill, can you give me an example of what you're talking about? Well, let me tell you about Mary. Um, Mary had a um, decreased appetite, uh, significant weight loss and intermittent crying episodes during the day. When we talked to the staff, the staff's attitude was simply that, oh, well, you know, she's 90 years old and, and um, she's got a history of depression. Now, we did an oral health assessment. We found a tartar buildup on the denture, uh, mouth ulcers on, on the top palate. So we had the resources and the skills that uh, from the program to deal with the cleaning up the denture. We referred her to the dentist. Um, and I, when the issues were resolved, we found that she um, put on weight again. Her appetite had increased, obviously. And uh, best of all, she stopped crying. The cost of poor oral health among older Australians is around $400 million a year. Much of that is due to hospital admissions for aspiration pneumonia. I can see the savings in implementing the model but there must be some cost for the residential care facility. Felicity Hargy was a director of care at a facility in South Australia. She may have something to say about the real cost benefits. A lot of people are concerned about the cost of high fluoride toothpaste, but we find that if it's used as it's recommended in a pea-sized amount, there's no greater cost than other products. We had a resident distribution list and that assisted us to monitor the appropriate use of that. And look, I think if you consider the costs of illness and hospitalisations um, against the costs of oral health products, we wouldn't even be talking about the cost of products. What were the biggest impacts of this new model of care? The education program was fabulous and it really focused staff awareness of how such a simple procedure has a great impact on residents' health and wellbeing. Our oral health assessments are now completed on admission and when care plan reviews are attended to. Anything else? Chest infection rates dropped dramatically, almost 50%. Um, we now have a visiting dentist as well and five years ago that was unheard of. So all our residents are having um, oral health assessments by a dentist and that dentist has observed that calcifications have uh, 
greatly reduced. Is there anything you've changed from the model? We're not using the antibacterial gel as frequently as recommended. We found that with good oral health care, gum disease levels dropped, and so now we're only using it when there's an indication for it. What are your messages to directors of care? Regular oral health education on induction uh, and annually is important. The use of high fluoride toothpaste is worthwhile. Appoint a champion in the workplace who can ensure that all aspects of the model are coordinated. And dental clinic days are really busy, so have a few volunteers available to assist. You clearly made a big change in your facility. What's your take home message? That if you use this model of care, you're not only going to comply with accreditation standards, but you'll also have a huge impact on residents' wellbeing. Okay, so what's different now compared to when the project started? The difference is, is there a much greater awareness about the importance of oral health. For example, AGHET assessment teams now ask questions about oral health and oral health competencies have been recognised as a skill set for aged care training. Importantly, I think the mouth has been put back into the body for residential aged care facilities because they take oral health much more seriously now. You're so passionate about this, that's quite clear. Where does that passion come from? My passion comes from knowing what a difference good oral health makes to the lives of older people. Clearly this model of care is having a widespread effect on shifting oral health to a high priority in residential care facilities. While there are obstacles to change, with the right people on board and with a team approach, those obstacles can be overcome. So people like Mary won't have to suffer the consequences of poor oral care.